I have, Hi, Jared. I have three papers, five balls, three juggling balls, one clicker, and no shame. <laughs> so, here we go. My name is Garrett Witterington. I'm a senior here at BACH. Uh, and coincidentally, I'm going into engineering, yet I'm standing up here talking about a circus act. So I can take these three balls and I can manipulate them so many different ways, in so many different patterns, I can even make them cross. And I drop one. Again, no shame. So, in sixth grade, life was good. I had no car, no job, no taxes to pay, no gas, none of this stuff that you know people worry about today. All I had were books. And one of my favorite books, as we're all seven years old on the inside, was the Encyclopedia of Immaturity. And in the back, there were two or three pages all about learning how to juggle. And since I had nothing better to do at the time, I taught myself how to juggle. I filled some socks with rice, and I spent countless hours just in my bedroom tossing them around, dropping them, picking, back, picking them back up, and then dropping them again and again and again. It got a little repetitive and slightly annoying. But eventually I did learn how to juggle. And then the other week I was teaching a friend, Nate, how to juggle because it was part of his class. It was part of his gym class. I don't know why, but it was. So I was teaching him, and I was also thinking about this presentation, and that's where I got the idea. And then I was thinking, well, everybody today runs around busy in their lives. They just go to work, come home, make dinner, take showers, eat, sleep, do whatever it is they do, and they never stop to think and learn anything new. So today I'm here to tell you why you should totally learn how to juggle. And it got me one thought, what happens when you learn a new skill such as juggling? Well, if everyone learned how to juggle, it wouldn't become cool anymore, so I have no reason to do it. But, it, it improves your brain. The first thing it does is change your brain in ways you may not even imagine. Your brain is consistent it has all these different areas, but it's, it's comprised of really two parts, the gray matter and the white matter. The gray matter is the actual stuff in your brain. When you see a brain, it's all gray matter. The synapses connect together on the inside, and you don't really see that with your eyes. And then the white matter is what surrounds the synapses to make them stronger, faster, uh, more easy to process information. The gray matter in your brain grows when you learn how to juggle. So German scientists in about 2004 did a study on this. They took 24 people, split them up into two groups, 12 and 12. The first group of 12, they said, live your life normally, don't do anything abnormal, just exist. And so they did. And there was no change within their brain. And they took an MRI scan before and after of both groups. And the group they told to learn how to juggle over a three-month period, their brain was more dense. It had more mass, more volume. And they, they correlated it to a growth in gray matter. And gray matter really is the... It's what processes the information. It made them smarter. It made them faster. Uh, it's what creates the visual and motor activities for your entire body. It, it's muscle control, sensory perception, seeing, hearing, memory, emotion, speech, decision making, and self-control. So this was all well and good until another researcher at the University of Oxford came along and did another study growing upon it. And she found that it increased white matter as well. The white matter is what connects everything, as I explained earlier. It's why we can't really forget things. If you haven't ridden a bike in three years, and you go get on a bike, chances are you'll still remember how to ride it. In three years, if I don't practice juggling between now and then, I will still know how to juggle. The white matter is what keeps that information in your brain. And the other thing they figured out is that after four weeks without juggling, 
the gray matter stayed, and the white matter continued to increase. Which is the funky thing, because they weren't practice juggling, they just went back to their regular lives, yet their brain was still growing and processing this new information. They found that learning a skill is more important than exercising a skill. Your brain wants to be puzzled, it wants to be confused, it wants to learn and grow, and learning a new skill is what makes it do that. They also found, in another study, this can be used to help those with brain injuries, concussions, anxiety disorders, the works. It helps out a person in a way that nothing else might. It's a therapy. So, they did more studies, and it helps reduce stress and makes you focus. It encourages focus. It's basically a meditation. Now, you all may think meditation is just sitting down in a quiet place, listening to your breathing, but there's actually this other part called active meditation, like dancing, or my favorite, juggling. So, many older people in our generations, or even some young ones, I know myself, I do it occasionally, we like to pull our mind off the everyday things. We enjoy menial tasks, like mowing the lawn, because we don't have to think about anything. We're just sitting on the tractor, driving around in circles, looking for sticks that could damage the mower. It's simple, it's easy. We don't have to think, we just do it. And it's relaxing, because we're not worried about the everyday problems of life. So, why not learn how to chuckle? I use it as meditation every once in a while. If I'm really pissed off, I either take a nap, which works really well, or I go to juggle, because it takes my mind off of what made me angry. This is why none of you have ever really seen me very angry. It's rather hard to do. I'd be impressed if you could pull it off. It's also a little bit of exercise. There's another study done. They did, they did something with mice. They, mice hate swimming. So they put some mice in a fish tank and made them swim around and saw the maze to get to a platform. And the mice that did exercise in between the trials had better memory. They went to the, the platform in the center of the maze faster. They did it better. They didn't take the random turns that the other mice did. The exercise improves your memory, which again relates back to the gray matter increase in your brain. Overall, juggling will increase your coordination. It's one of the first things people may think about when they see people chucking three balls around in the air. Ah, he's pretty coordinated. Great. You become less clumsy. You don't drop things on the floor all of a sudden. You could be sitting at a table in a restaurant, and a knife could just be on the edge, about to fall off the table, and you could watch it slowly jiggle its way to the edge, and then fall off, and you can just reach out and grab it, and it won't hit the floor. And someone may look over and say, you're a ninja. It's happened. Anyway, so, this can also correlate to other skills. You can type faster. The, the increase in your brain activity will make you learn other skills faster. Learning an instrument, driving a car, learning machinery, doing other things like blacksmithing, all the trade skills that people may not think about every day. It's also a pretty cool novelty that you can just pull out. You know, if I stand here and I say, okay, I can juggle three balls, but I can also send them up in columns, and then I can drop them, and then pick them back up, as happens a whole lot when you're first learning. It's a little embarrassing, but we'll move on. You can go over the top, right? You can do two in one hand, then you can crisscross your arms and do something funky, like Burke's Barrage. I learned this one back in February. Then you can do, if I don't drop it, hey, you can do the windmill. They're all moving in the same circular pattern. And then you can do the fake windmill, if I can, there we go. Where they're all going over the same top, and it kind of looks the same, but it's really not. The other one requires a lot more coordination because I'm crossing my arms underneath. It's kind of cool. Now, you may think, when the heck do I have time to learn how to do this? Every day, 
Every day you have five minutes, at least, where you aren't doing anything, learning anything, you're just sitting on the couch relaxing. But that's not the five minutes that I want you to concentrate on. You can take a break when you get home from work. When you walk through the door on your way home, you don't have to go jump into the next thing. You can take five minutes right then, before you start anything new, and learn a new skill, such as juggling. And the people that do everything, they learn it one step at a time, just like you'll have to learn everything one step at a time. They may be able to do it faster, but they do it the exact same way. It only takes five minutes. Five minutes. It's very useful. There's a learning curve to it, which I'll explain in a moment, but it's only five minutes. The learning curve for juggling and most other things is actually rather simple. You start off in your first instance and you get better very quickly. Very quickly. It's insane. You're so excited. Hey, I can juggle. It's great. Am I right, Nate? Bingo. Proof. So, then you hit the dip. This is where people quit. This is the most important time. It gets frustrating because you seem to lose the skills you had just 10 minutes prior. It's infuriating, but you still have to work towards it. This, in the dip, is where your brain is building the coordination. It's building the muscle control. It's doing all the things you don't think about. And then when you come out of the dip, you do get better. You notice it. You'd be more relaxed. It's more comfortable. And then eventually, you can achieve mastery in the skill. And once again, it only takes five minutes out of your entire day. Learning an instrument, for example, is one of the key things that I hear this argument most. You spend more time setting up and taking down the instrument than you do actually practicing, and that's why people say it's not worth it. But if it's just three objects sitting on a table, all it takes is that you walk over there, you pick them up, and then you practice for five minutes. Only five minutes, not ten, there's no setup, there's no cleanup, you can just leave them there. And then once you learn one thing, you'll learn a second, and then a third, and then a fourth. And all it takes is five minutes a day. Don't skip it, it's important. But that's it. Five minutes. It's the most important five minutes you'll have in your entire day. It's that point where you're learning new things. You're growing your brain. You're establishing new connections that you can then go on and use for other skills. So to wrap all of this up, it started as a funny book, which turned into a hobby, which made my brain bigger and better and brighter, made me stronger, improved my coordination, boosted my memory and confidence, takes my mind off whatever it is I'm troubled about. And it's a cool talent I can pull up at parties. Just an added bonus. So I encourage all of you, take the five minutes out of your day, learn this new skill, become smarter, faster, stronger, better, and then when you learn one, learn another. Because life is either a daring adventure or nothing at all. And how many people do you know can do this? <laughs>